received the PowerPoint from last week with regard to, okay, the home-based business. Okay, excellent. I want to make sure you're starting that because that's going to help you minimize taxes all throughout the 12 months. And prayerfully, um, given the number of deductions you'll have, the Internal Revenue Service will then owe you a credit or a refund, and then you can distribute those dollars either toward a debt elimination plan or toward your emergency savings account or your long-term goal savings account. But that's going to bring more money back into your house, and you're not doing anything different those 12 months than what you're currently doing. Hmm. Okay. Now, what about Mrs. Uh, Janine? Have you spoken with Janine? Okay, okay. Well, it's now. Good evening, good evening. Till I said hello, good evening. Okay. Excellent. 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 Okay. With 701, I'm going to give everybody another minute and then I'm going to go ahead and get started at 702, give them a two minute grace period. Oh, she's well. She is well. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I will definitely do that. Okay. So let's see. I have to drag this down. I muted it. So, Kimberly, I need your help. Your help here. I'm dragging this down. I'm dragging this down. And then you told me to bring this up in the corner here. Oh, it's, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Okay, good evening, uh, Sister Ruby. We're going to get started here in about the next uh, 30 seconds. I shared that I will give everybody a two-minute grace period. But I want to make sure I'm respecting everyone's time and that we end this session tonight at 8 p.m. Okay, so it is now seven. It is two minutes after seven. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. And again, uh, thank you for attending uh, the Kingdom Mastermind. This is our sixth week together. We're on lesson number six. And as you know, our motto is building the kingdom of God one family at a time. Because we know that God no longer dwells in brick and mortar. He now dwells in the lives and hearts of his people. So we want to make sure that everything we do, we're making sure that the kingdom of God or the true temple of God is provided for. And that is, of course, those that name the name of Jesus Christ. So as we always do, we're going to go before the creator this evening in prayer and ask him to guide our session uh, this evening to superintend this process. So, Father, we come to you right now asking you to bless every household that's gathered here this evening. I pray that you would bless, Lord God, them spiritually, bless their finances. Let this be their year of favor. Let this be their year of increase. I pray that you would uh, bring in the overflow this year and give them the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of how to use your resources so that it will improve their station of living so that they can be a blessing unto others and that they can leave an inheritance to their children. These blessings we ask in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, so now, I ask everyone every week, uh, Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, you also have The Psychology of Money, which is another great text. And also the book of Proverbs, uh, which is a Hebrew text in the, King, in the, uh, the Holy Bible. It's a uh, part of the Hebrew poetry. Uh, talks about as a man thinks in his heart, so it becomes. So your thoughts become things. So it doesn't matter how much money you make. If your mindset is to spend or you have a consumer mindset, you will never attain uh, wealth. So the goal is to make sure that we have the right mentality or we understand the true psychology of money. So the goal is to keep money as opposed to spending money. So one of the things that I always share each week is that I want us to go through our wealth affirmations. We want to affirm that we are worthy to receive wealth. You have to believe that you're worthy to receive it before it becomes a reality in your life. So every week, I want to start the lesson by saying, 
I am worthy of having more wealth. Financial freedom is my birthright. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Wealth constantly flows into my life. My actions create constant prosperity. I am grateful to be financially free. So those are our wealth affirmations. Those are the things that we are affirming to be true in our life, and we're not deviating from it. For a double-minded man, let him think not that he shall receive anything from the Lord. So we're not wavering. We're holding to those affirmations. As we look at our review, which is something we do every week as well, we look at our review. And to date, these are the things that you should have accomplished. Remember, this is measurable ministry. This is not ministry where you come and you shout and you sweat and you speak in tongues. And then after the benediction has been rendered, you go home asking the question, how then shall I live? This is measurable ministry. So the goal is after these 10 sessions, you should have strategies in place to make sure that you and your family are financially whole. So let's review. To date, you should have reviewed your spending looking at three months of your credit card statements and three months of your bank statements to see exactly where your money is going. How much am I allocating every month toward my bills and my utilities, which are my fixed expenses? How much am I allocating for personal spending? So you were supposed to look at three months to see where your money was going. Number two, you were to automate your monthly expenses by setting up four separate bank accounts two checking accounts, and two savings accounts. Remember, the first checking is where all of your income flows into. And then that second account is where all of your fixed expenses, your bills and utilities go into that account. And it's automated. Your first savings account, that is your emergency savings fund. And remember, that emergency savings fund should have at minimum three months of your monthly fixed expenses. And that second savings account is your long-term goal savings account. Remember, nothing goes into that long-term saving account until you have at least $1,200 into your emergency savings account. So we want to make sure that you're funding that emergency savings account first. It's important to have revenue on hand in case of an emergency. Number three, we created a debt elimination strategy. That's where, that's where you listed all of your debts from your smallest debt to your greatest debt. And the goal was to pay the minimum on all of your debts except that smallest debt. You are going to take all of your surplus plus the minimum and put it on that smallest debt until you eliminated that debt. And then you would take the minimum payment from that smallest debt and the surplus and put it on the second uh, debt. And you would continue to do that until you have eliminated your debts. That's called the snowball method because it builds momentum. Step number four, we talked about implementing strategies to increase your credit score. I showed you the credit mix, all of the factors that make up your credit score, that three digit uh that three digit credit score that the three credit reporting bureaus use to show how responsible you are with handling credit. So we went over the strategies to increase your credit score. And then last week we talked about creating a home-based business, a home-based business where you did not have to meet the exclusivity test of the internal revenue service. That home-based business would give you the opportunity to claim deductions all 12 months of the calendar year so that you're minimizing tax liability and you're positioning yourself to receive a refund. That's the goal is for you to receive a refund from all the taxes that you're paying for the 12 months of the calendar year. And then you're able to take those revenues and to distribute them uh, as you see fit, whether that's in your emergency savings account, your long term savings account or your debt elimination strategy. And this week, we're going to talk about credit card optimization. So last week, last week, we talked about your home-based business, which is going to minimize tax liability. And this week, we're going to talk about 
another strategy to bring revenue back into your home, and that is credit card optimization. So I'm going to now, without further ado, go into our PowerPoint presentation for this evening, and we're going to talk about the credit card game. Robert Kiyosaki, who, in my opinion, uh, who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if you haven't read that text, uh, you really need to add that to your financial library. But Robert Kiyosaki, uh, he said something. He said the goal is to learn how to play the game of Monopoly and then take that game and make it real life. Live your life like a game of Monopoly. The goal is to purchase as many assets as possible and let those assets produce a passive income stream that will then take care of your liabilities. So that was that was very smart. But the one thing that I like is that he equated it to a game. And that's what banking and finance and commerce is. It's really a game. You have to learn the rules of the game. And once you learn the rules, play the game well. The reason why most of us are not successful, because we are playing a game and we don't understand the rules. So let's talk about the credit card game. Oh, so this first slide, the majority of revenue, when you look at the credit card companies, the credit card companies are extending these offers to you to apply for their credit card because they want to make a profit off of you as a consumer. So how do they make their profit? Well, according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, they make their profit based off of you paying interest in annual fees. Also, number three, they make their profit off of merchants who use their credit cards uh, and then they charge the merchant a fee for being able to do transactions utilizing their credit cards. So they make money from the merchants who use their credit cards to transact business. They make money from annual fees from you, the consumer, and then they make money from you, the consumer, uh, through interest payments. When you don't pay off your full bill, you pay an interest rate. And so that's how they make their money. So the goal is to learn how to not pay them interest and how to avoid paying those annual fees so that you're receiving rewards without giving the credit card company profits. And the credit card companies, believe it or not, when you don't pay interest and you avoid annual fees, they label you as a term in the industry. You're called a deadbeat. <laughs> So let's let's move forward. So let's look at some of the secret perks because I'm an advocate of using credit cards. So let's look at some of the secret perks of using a credit card. Number one, when you use a credit card, you get a warranty. Most credit cards extend the warranty on your purchases. So whenever I'm buying appliances, electronics, uh, just bought refrigerator for our, for our home, uh, washer and dryer. Anything, any large purchases, I'm using my credit card because of the consumer protection uh, program that's associated with the credit card and the extended warranty that comes with it. Whenever I do car rental, I always use my credit card when I'm doing car rental. And so I waive using their insurance because the credit card offers me additional insurance. Some credit cards will offer up to $50,000. So you want to inquire if you have a credit card about the car rental insurance associated with your credit card. They also offer trip cancellation insurance. I'm booking a trip for the missus and I. Uh, we're doing a seven country uh, tour in Europe. And so I shared with the travel agency, if I pay for it now, what happens next year if the trip is postponed due to pandemic or, you know, inclement weather, anything could happen. Uh, so American Express said, well, if, it, if anything happens, uh, then you have trip cancellation insurance through your Amex uh, Platinum card. So your credit cards provide you with trip cancellation insurance. So that's why it's good to use credit cards. And if you have any questions, as I always state, please put those questions in the chat. So now choosing the right credit card. So if the goal is to use credit, how do I know I have the right credit card? Or how do I know to select the right credit card? So here's uh, A. The first thing you want to decide is what type of rewards do you want? Do you want cash back or do you want travel perks? That's the decision you have to make. For me, I like travel perks. I like to travel, so I want a credit card that's going to give me the most perks when it comes to 
airline miles and hotel accommodations. Uh, B, once you decide what reward you want, you want to look at a site, and I gave you two. You have bankrate.com and you have nerdwallet.com. Both of those sites will give you a breakdown or a synopsis of each credit card, what type of rewards they offer, the minimum credit score to apply for those cards, the annual percentage rate, et cetera. So it will go over all of that. And that's, again, bankrate.com or nerdwallet.com. <coughs> Excuse me. C, review the rewards of each card to see which reward cards work best for you. So you have to determine, I can't make that decision for you. When you look at those two sites, you'll have to make a decision what card works best for you and your family. Now, how to maximize credit card rewards. And these are the three steps. And excuse me, you can see I have a typo there. I have a four there instead of a three. So forgive Osceola, I will correct that before emailing uh, you the PowerPoint. But number one, you have to use the right card. Number two, earn the welcome bonus. And I'll explain that here momentarily. And number three, pay your bill in full every month to avoid paying the credit card company's interest. Your goal is to play the game well. You do not want to pay them any interest, but you want to get all the rewards and perks associated with their card. So their job is to make you pay interest. Your job is to not pay interest and get their rewards. See how the game goes? So let's look at number one, using the right card. Using a rewards card for all your purchases can help you earn cash back, points, or miles. And if you use the right card at the right time, you can maximize the amount of rewards you earn. So again, using your credit card earns you points and rewards or cash back. That's why you want to use a credit card as opposed to a debit card. And I'll talk more about that. But credit cards give you rewards, they give you points, and they give you other benefits. Number two, I talked about earning the welcome bonus. Every credit card offer will extend you a welcome bonus because they're welcoming you to their credit card family they're going to give you the opportunity to receive a bonus in addition to receiving your credit card. So most rewards, uh, credit cards offer a welcome bonus that can help you jumpstart earning rewards. Reward cards typically provide bonuses, listen to this, over $150 and some up to $750. So you have these reward cards, they will offer benefits up to 150 well from 150 dollars up to 750 dollars that's a welcome bonus welcoming you to the credit card family now welcoming bonuses require something they require you to spend anywhere from 500 dollars to four thousand dollars within the first three months so when i open up my american express platinum card i think i had to spend somewhere um I think it was actually over $4,000. I think it was like $5,000. But I, at that time, I happened to have uh, floors being installed. Uh, I was purchasing a washer and dryer and a refrigerator. So I did all of that with the card. And the money that I was going to use for my bank account, I just paid it on the card and paid it off within 30 days. And I received the welcome bonus. And the welcome bonus was 100,000 points, which probably comes somewhere to like $800. So I was able to take advantage of that welcome bonus within the first 30 days of receiving the card. So that was a gift that was extended to me as a consumer because I spent a certain amount of dollars on the card within the first 90 days. And so many uh, card issuers will extend that to you. It's called a welcome bonus. That's another benefit of having a card because that $800, guess what it does? It gives me at least three to four nights at a luxury hotel that I now don't have to pay for out of pocket. Now, if I would have took that same $5,000 and paid it from my debit account, I would have got the merchandise, the washer, the dryer, the refrigerator, the flooring, etc. But I would not have received any perks. The bank is not giving me any additional perks. The credit card gave me an additional $800 in hotel accommodations.
That's what I want you to look at. Using money that you're going to spend anyway, but you're using it on your credit card because the credit card is going to give you rewards, perks, or benefits. Now, here's the important note when it comes to credit cards. I cannot stress this enough. When it comes to your welcome bonus, while the welcome bonus can be lucrative, you shouldn't overspend just to earn it. Don't try to take advantage of the welcome bonus. If they say we're going to extend you 100,000 points if you spend $4,000 in three months, don't take on $4,000 worth of debt just to get the welcome points. That's not how the game is played because now you have $4,000 that you have to pay back on that credit card that you weren't intending to spend. And now that's going to occur, what? Interest. Your goal is to not pay any interest. Only take advantage of the welcome bonus if within those first 90 days, you're going to spend $4,000 anyway. Whether that's on your, um, it could be your utility bills. It could be anything that you're doing with your monthly fixed expenses. You add those up. If they come to $4,000, great. Take advantage of that welcome bonus. If not, do not take on additional debt just to occur or to receive the perks and benefits of the welcome bonus because you don't want to take on that additional debt and you don't want to take on that additional interest. So I, please uh, hear me when I say that. I'm trying to show you how to take advantage of the credit card companies, improve your station of living, but not pay them interest to get all of those rewards by spending money that you would have spent anyway. It's just that now you're receiving a reward for it. Number three, pay your bill in full. That's the goal. When you're using your credit card, only you credit cards, let me just say this, credit cards are not free money. So when you're using your credit card, only use your credit card to pay for things that you're going to pay for anyway. I have my Hulu subscription. Yes, I have Hulu. I have Netflix. That's tied to my credit cards. I do Spotify. It's tied to my credit cards. My electric bill, my water bill, tied to my credit card. ADT. My alarm system is tied to my credit card. Uh, my insurance phone bill tied to my credit card. All of these expenses is tied to my credit card. Now, here is the caveat. You cannot pay credit with credit. So if you try to pay your car payment, most car dealerships or lending institutions, they won't accept the credit card. Mortgage company won't accept the credit card because now you're trying to pay credit with credit. But if the creditor accepts a credit card, Put it on auto pay and use the credit card and then pay the credit card off in full every single month because those were expenses that you were going to pay anyway. Your grocery bill. If you were planning to pay $100 at the grocery store and you have that $100 in your bank account, use your credit card to pay for those groceries and then transfer the funds from your bank account onto your credit card and pay that bill off that evening in full. Now you're getting points on something that you would have spent money on anyway, except the debit card of the bank is not going to give you any rewards. The credit card company is, and you're not paying them interest, so they're not making a profit off of you, but you're taking advantage of their benefits and their perks. A lot of this is going to be redundant, but I'm doing that because adults learn by repetition, so I want to make sure this is resonating with you. Now here's the question. So I'm doing all this preaching or teaching on using credit cards. The, someone might ask the question, why can't I just use my debit card? Here's why. And you see, I say use credit, not debit. When you use a reward or cash back credit card, it's like you have a built in discount. So it's like you're getting a discount every time you use your credit card. Why? Because some credit cards are going to give you cash back. Some credit cards are going to give you hotel uh, accommodation points. Some are going to give you uh, airline miles, etc. So you're getting free stuff every time you use your credit card to pay for stuff that you're going to pay for anyway. So it's like you're getting a discount every time you swipe. Experts advise consumers not to use a debit card 
and to reach for a credit card instead, you will hear several experts share that opinion. The most apparent cost of using a debit card instead of a credit card is loss rewards. So every time you use your debit card, you are losing rewards or you're losing points or you're losing cash back. Additionally, debit cards don't offer the same protections as credit cards. Listen to this. Even though you can find fraud protection on both credit cards and debit cards, charges on a credit card won't immediately drain your bank account like charges on a debit card will. Charges on a debit card could put your account into a, a negative uh, status and you could wind up paying additional charges and fees to the bank. So think about that. When you use your debit card, you're not receiving any rewards, any cash back or any points. When you use a credit card, you are. And if you pay that bill in full every month, you're not paying any interest but you're receiving perks and benefits every month. Let's see if I have any questions here. Okay, great. <clears throat> so rule number one, when it comes to using credit and not debit, and I say rule number one because I really want you to process this. Treat your credit card like a debit card. So we're not using the debit card but we're treating the credit card like a debit card. Only charge what you know you can pay off in full right away. Remember the strategy I said, if you were going to the grocery store and your goal was to spend hundred dollars in groceries and you know you have the hundred dollars in your bank account to pay for those groceries, rather than give that cashier your debit card or swipe your debit card, use the credit card. And when you get home, Take the hundred dollars from your bank account and pay that hundred dollar charge off on your credit card that evening. Just zero it out. Now you just received a hundred dollars in points or rewards from your credit card. Whereas if you had used your debit card, you would have received nothing. You would have got the groceries, but you would have received no additional perks. The credit card gives you the grocery and the perks. And you see what I have here on the bottom of this slide. Remember, credit cards are not free money. I keep saying that. That's what get most people in trouble because, because they look at a credit card as free money. And that's how the credit card issuer wants you to look at it. If they give you a $2,000 credit limit, they want you to spend $2,000. No, I'm only going to spend on that credit card what I have in the bank to pay off that same day or that same week. That way, Mr. Credit Card Company, I'm not paying you any interest but you're obligated to give me all the perks and benefits that I signed up for within your contract. So I'm receiving all the bonuses and the gifts, but you're not receiving the interest that you thought you were going to get from me as a consumer with those high interest rates. Remember, it's learning how to play the game and then playing the game well. So now look at this. What if I have multiple credit cards? Right. Some of us have several credit cards. I have several credit cards. Remember when I did the uh, training on credit score and looked at the credit mix, they said most of the individuals in the country that had credit scores 800 and above what they had at least what six or seven credit cards. So what if I have multiple credit cards? Juggling multiple uh, cards can be complicated and it can but it also makes it easier to maximize rewards. So now here's an example. And I put this example within the PowerPoint. And as I share with you, I always email you the PowerPoints every week. You might start by using one card for everyday purchase. So there's a certain credit card you're going to have for everyday purchases, right? And I put some of those everyday purchase credit cards here within, within the text. So you have your city double cash card that offers 2% cash back on all purchase. 1% uh, back when you buy and 1% when you pay it off. So they'll give you 1% for purchases and 1% when you pay those purchases off. Now, if you want to take it further, you have the Chase Freedom Flex card. That earns, you can earn up to 5% cash back on up to $1,500 per quarter. Let me repeat that. With the Chase Freedom Flex card, 
you can earn 5% cash back on up to $1,500 per quarter. So what is that? $6,000 a year. For a third option, you could consider a travel rewards card. So my wife has the Marriott Bonvoy card. If we stay at a Marriott hotel, they, gives us, they give us, what, 10 times the points. And I think when the statement comes out, they add an additional six. So that's like 16 points per dollar every billing cycle. That's powerful. So that third option uh, is a travel rewards card. And that helps you collect, of course, mileage or hotel stays. So that's when you have multiple credit cards. You're making sure that you're taking, you're looking at the cards and what they're offering. And based on the categories, which one offers the most points in this category? Well, I use that card for that category. So you're making sure that you're aligning the categories with the card that gives you the most points. Now, since we all eat, you should always have a card that offers outstanding returns on grocery stores, restaurants, or both. If you're, if you're going out to eat and you're shopping at a grocery store and you're using your debit card for those purchases, shame on you because you are taking opportunities out of your household. You could be taking those same cards and using those cards to pay for your groceries and your dining out and have those credit card companies give you points so that you could take you and your children or you and your spouse on hotel stays, flights uh, out of the state, out of the country. By simply using a car to pay for a purchase that you're going to pay for anyway. I keep saying that word anyway. It's not free money. I'm only using the card for things that I'm going to purchase anyway based on the money that I have in my bank account. So now that Chase uh, Freedom Flex card, 5%, and that is powerful. 5% on uh, dining and 5% on purchases in other categories and also travel. So you want to make sure you're looking at uh, the Chase Freedom Flex card as well. So those are uh, two different cards. And I'm sorry, let me, let me back up for a moment because I'm actually getting ahead of myself and I don't want to do that. I want to take my time and make sure I'm articulating this uh, in a manner that you can understand because this is important. So I just finished saying that since we all eat out and we frequent grocery stores and restaurants, the American Expl Express Blue Cash Preferred card. I just had a family member, I posted it on social media. His credit score is now over 700. He started in the low sixes. And within a couple of months, he's now over 700. And the goal is in January for him to be at a 750. And I share with him, I want you to apply for this American Ex Express Blue Cash Preferred card because it gives you 6% cash, ba cash back on up to $6,000. And that's still $1,500 a quarter. $6,000 a year spent at grocery stores. So if you spend $6,000 a year on groceries, take that $6,000 and times it by six. And that's how many points they're going to give you for money you are going to spend anyway at the grocery store. Now, the Chase Freedom Flex card is another great option. Card holders earn an impressive 5% cash back on eligible purchases in rotating categories. So their categories rotate throughout the year. But you get 5% on those rotating categories. And those rotating categories can be anything from travel to dining, drugstores, et cetera. Or the drugstores, excuse me, is 3%. But if you're following me, you should see that the credit cards are giving you perks. The debit card gives you nothing. For cards with no annual fee. Now, remember I shared with you, that's how credit cards make their money. Credit card companies make their money because they charge you interest and they charge you annual fees and they charge you late fees. So if you want cards with no annual fee, you have the Discover It Cash Back card offers 5% back on restaurants during one quarter of the year. Maximum spending in that quarter, $1,500. Amazon Visa, which is from Chase, offers 2% back on restaurants and drugstores all year round as well as 3% on Amazon purchases. So these cards have no annual fee.
Now, think about this. You're using these cards as opposed to your debit card, but you're only using the card based on the money you have in the bank. So now you're making purchases, and I keep repeating this, that you would have made anyway, but now your family is getting rewards, perks, and benefits of money that you're spending all year long anyway. So now, since we're talking about using your credit cards, remember when I did the credit, uh, credit repair lesson, I shared with you that one of the factors that makes up your credit score is credit utilization. So experts share with you that you do not want your credit utilization to be above uh, 20%. I try to keep mine at 10%. But let's just say it's at 20%. And as you see the picture here, I gave you an example. If you have a credit card, excuse me, if you have a credit card and the limit is $4,000, 20% is $800. Why? Because 10% of 4,000 is 400. So another 10% is 800. That's 20%. So if your credit card, the limit is $4,000, you do not want to spend over $800 on that credit card a month. Once you are above $800, stop using that card. But remember the strategy I shared with you? If you go to the grocery store, pay it off that same evening. So you should not be accumulating debt over the $800 because every time you purchase something, you're zeroing it out that night or that week. But the goal is to make sure that when it comes to credit card utilization, that you're looking at all of your cards and making sure that on each card, you're not spending more than 20% of the credit available on that card. No more than 20%. Why, Osceola? Because look here where it says, reduce your amounts owed and improve credit utilization. When it comes to your credit score, credit utilization makes up 30% of your credit score. So if your credit utilization rate is out of whack, that's going to affect 30%, almost a third of your credit score. So when it comes to utilizing credit cards, look at the available credit limit on each card and do not spend more than 20% of that each month. Is everybody following me? And that's what I have here in the second paragraph. List all your credit cards. Add up your credit limits. Make sure you're using no more than 20% credit utilization across all of your cards. Here's the second strategy. Add a minor as an authorized user. That can help build that minor's credit. And when I say minor, I'm talking about your children. It could be your grandchildren. It could be your nieces and nephews if you so desire. But by adding them as an authorized user, you're helping to improve their credit score or helping to build their credit so that when they graduate high school, guess what? They graduate with a 700 credit score. They graduate college, 700 credit score, all because you made them an authorized user on your credit card. And that's if your credit card is in good standing. And that's if you're paying the bill uh, every month. Remember, if you're going to add them as an authorized user, you want to be that person that has a 20% credit utilization rate and that have a decent credit score and have a good payment history. If those factors do not apply to you, do not add them as an authorized user because you're not helping their credit. You add them as an authorized user when your credit is in good standing and you follow the principles. 20% credit utilization, you pay your bill off in full every month, and you have a decent credit score and payment history. Now, and I just shared this with you. Not only do you help them to build credit for life, this allows them to get better credit offers when it comes to loans, mortgages, car leases, and more once they're older. So when you add them as an authorized user while they're in school, when they graduate, you're setting them up uh, as a consumer to get low interest rates and to approve uh, their chances or likelihood of receiving loans. <clears throat> now listen to this. When you add a child as an authorized user, 
it reports as a new account on that child's credit report. And the account history and details will impact their report upon high school or college graduation. Now, I gave you some financial institutions here. Bank of America, Capital One, and Chase have no age requirement for you to put a child on your card as an authorized user. Let me repeat that. Bank of America, Capital One, and Chase have no age requirement for you to add a minor as an authorized user on your credit cards. American Express requires children to be 13 years or older. So if your child is 13 years of age or older, you can add them to your American Express card. My wife and I have both of our children added as authorized users on our Amex accounts. <clears throat> Now, here's some questions when it comes to the loyalty programs. Loyalty programs are the programs associated with the credit card uh, companies. It's their reward program. They're called loyalty programs. So if you have a hotel loyalty program, uh, here's some things you want to ask when it comes to the hotel loyalty program. Does the hotel chain have peak or off-peak pricing? Can I use any free night certificates toward my trip? Or will val variable pricing mean they aren't valid? Excuse me. Number three, does the program offer any free nights with Marriott Bonvoy? We have a certain amount of points that we accumulate and they offer us uh, free nights throughout the year. Also something called suite nights where you can upgrade your regular room to a suite. And we're at titanium status, which is real high because we stayed at hotels uh, while our house was being built. And so we accumulated a lot of points. So you want to make sure that when it comes to hotel loyalty programs that you're asking these questions. And again, I'm going to email this PowerPoint. So if you want to screenshot uh, the screen, you can. But I'll also be emailing the PowerPoint. When it comes to airline loyalty programs, you want to ask the questions, how much will the how much will the flight I want to take cost in miles? So you want to know that uh, convertibility rate. Number two, does the flight cost fluctuate depending on the time of year I'm flying? I ask that when it comes to hotels. They're peak season, off-peak season, etc. Same thing can apply to flying. Number three, which airlines partners with this, which airlines partner with this loyalty program? So with the credit card that I have, uh, it partners with American Airlines. So that's the airline that I use. I use American. Number four, does the program offer earning does the program offer earning boosts via spending or flights taking so those are questions that you want to ask when it comes to the airline loyalty program now i've done the research for you all you have to do is just copy and paste this make a telephone call ask these questions then make a decision as a consumer does this work best for me and my family or do i need to look at another loyalty program questions for transferable points programs so what value can I get for my points if I use them to pay for, pl for uh, flights? Mm. That's a question that you want to ask. What transfer partners can I use to help get me to my destination? What bonus categories does my card offer to help boost my earn earnings? And most of the time when you apply to these cards, they will send you out a packet of information with their rewards program and all of these questions will be answered. But if you want to find out these questions before you apply, because let me say this, when you apply, they are going to do what is called a hard pull on your credit report. So when they do a hard pull on your credit report, that is going to impact your credit score. So it may take some points away from your credit score. You can always build those back up in the next three to six months by doing on-time payments. But it is going to affect your credit score when they do a hard pull. So make sure when you apply for the card that it's the card that you want. Do not try applying for three and four different cards because that's going to be three and four different pulls on your credit report. Do the research with the cards. Ask these questions to their loyalty programs departments and make a decision if this is the card that best meets the needs of me and my family. Does the program waive resort fees on award bookings? That's a great one. You want to make sure... Uh, if you have to pay resort fees, what are those resort fees and can those fees be waived? Are points and cash bookings and options? That's one of the things that I look at now when I make reservations. I always ask. And Amex is good about doing this. They will allow me 
to use a certain amount of points if I have them. And what I don't have in points, whatever the remaining balance is, I can then do in cash. So if it's $30,000 a night for a room and I only have $25,000 in points, then they will take the 25,000 points. I'll owe 5,000 uh, points and whatever that converts to in dollars, I'll pay that difference. So they would allow me to do that mix. But you have to find out from the credit card company, is that something they offer? So ask that question. Uh, does a credit card, does a credit card I hold give me status with the program? So again, Marriott Bonvoy, they give you status, they give you tiers. We're at titanium status, that's one of the highest tiers. So you wanna find that out. Does that status confer benefits such as breakfast, upgrades, or late, late checkout? So right now, because we are titanium members, uh, it gives us late checkout. But because I'm an Amex Platinum member, whenever I go to a hotel, they give me an upgrade if it's available. And they also provide my wife and I free breakfast during our stay uh, without us having to pay for it. So that's the benefits of credit cards. <clears throat> Any questions? Okay, no questions in the chat. Very good. So what credit card should I apply for based on my score? Many of you have been contacting me asking about credit cards and you wanted to know what credit card you could apply for based on your credit score. And so I took the liberty of doing the homework for you, uh, but you're going to have to make a decision as to what card you want to apply for. But here's how it breaks out. So you can see how credit scores are rated. 750 to 850 is excellent. 700 to 749 is considered good. 650 to 699 is considered fair. 550 to 649 is considered poor. And then they have 350 to 549 is considered uh, bad credit. So let's look at what card you can apply for if you're in that excellent category of 750 to 850. You can apply for the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. That's a travel card. The annual fee for that card is $550. Now, some people say, ah, I don't want to pay an annual fee. And I shared that with you earlier. But there are some cards where the annual fee is actually worth it because of the amount of value they give to you as a consumer. So the Chase, the next card is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. That annual fee is $95. You have the Capital One Venture Rewards card. The annual fee is $95. Again, these are what are called top tier credit cards, and you must have excellent credit to apply for these. Next is the American Express Platinum card. American Express Platinum card is the uh, number one top tier card other than their black card. So the American Express Platinum card, the annual fee is $695. That's the card that I have. Now, some might say, well, Osceola, why are you paying $695 a year for that credit card when you said the goal is not to pay any annual fees because they give me a $200 luxury hotel credit every year on my card. They give me a $200 TSA credit. They give me another $200 uh, credit where I don't have to wait in lines if I'm doing international travel when I come back. Uh, they also give me an automatic uh, gold program for car rental, so I don't have to wait in line when I'm renting cars. I can just go right to the car. Um, they also provide me with a Saks Fifth Avenue credit. They provide me with uh, the breakfast upgrades as I share with you. Uh, it's so, and, and I'm not even naming all of the benefits. There are so many benefits. I get a $200 airline credit. So the wife and I just, uh, we went to Hawaii, and we came back with um, souvenirs. And so we had to check bags. And I found out when I looked at my uh, Amex uh, benefits, we had a $200 credit. So when they went to charge me the $50 fee for the bag, I gave it to them. But then Amex wrote it off as a $50 credit. Now I have $150 credit left. So those are some of the benefits. So when you look at the benefits, the benefits alone are about $1,500. But I'm paying a six ninety-five dollars uh, fee every year. The question I had to ask myself is, would I pay that money anyway? Since I would have paid it anyway, I go ahead and I pay the fee because the six ninety five dollars is going to give me $1,500 plus in benefits. So I'm making more than double. So you have to ask yourself that question as a consumer. Is it worth it for you? You also have the Blue Cash Preferred card by American Express. That's the one that gave you the six points. The one I shared with you that I told my family member I want them to apply for because it gives you the six points for the grocery store up to $6,000 a year. 
and it gives you the same high uh, rate on gas and uh, dining. So this is what is called the everyday car because it's for everyday expenses. So these are the cards if you have an excellent credit score. <clears throat> Next, if you have a good uh, credit score, you have the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Look at this, no annual fee. The credit score for this card is 670 to 739. And that's for all of these cards. This is the credit score. You need a 670 to 739 credit score. You can apply for the Chase Freedom Flex card, the Discover It Cash Back card, then you have the travel card, which is the Discover It Miles card, or the Capital One Venture One Rewards card. These are the cards you can apply for with good credit, 670 credit score to 739 credit score. Next, if your credit score is between 580 and 669, and you should know this because one of the first lessons uh, I asked you to apply for your credit report and so you could look at what your credit score was. So you know what your credit score is and so if your credit score is between 580 and 669, you can apply for the Capital One Platinum Card, no annual fee. The Capital One Quicksilver One Cash Rewards Card, no annual fee. This gives you cash back. The Bank of America Customized Cash Reward Card. This card here also has no annual fee. Now, if your credit score is below uh, 580, if it's 579 or below, you can apply for the Capital One Platinum Secured Card. This is a secured credit card, which means you have to provide a deposit as collateral so this card, you'll put down a refundable security deposit starting at $49 to get a $200 initial line of credit. Why would you do that? Because this card allows you to start building your credit. You're going to show them that you're using, if it's $200 credit line they're giving you, you're not going to spend any more than what? 10% of $200 is $20. $20 times two, which gives you 20%, that's $40. So you only want to tie this to maybe a Netflix account, a Hulu account, something small, so that you're only utilizing 20% of the available credit. And you're going to do that, the goal being to build your credit score. You also have the Surge MasterCard, no annual fee. The initial credit limit is anywhere from $300 to $1,000. Capital One Platinum, no annual fee. And you have to look at, they have terms and conditions that you'll have to apply for based on your individual circumstance that would determine your credit limit. But these are for those who have credit scores 579 and below. Now, if you are a consumer and you have no credit, you have the Capital One Platinum Card. If you have no credit, you can apply for the Capital One Platinum Card to start building credit and there's no annual fee. So this is one of the cards that you can apply for if you don't have any credit. I talk to individuals and they share with me, Osceola, I've never used uh, credit cards. I pay for everything with cash. So I really don't have any, uh, I don't have a credit history. They can apply for this card here, Capital One Platinum. You also have the Bank of America customized cash rewards card. This is a secured credit card, so you'll have to provide a deposit but it's no credit score required. Annual fee is zero, no annual fee. Now, for those of you, uh, once you have your cards and you solidified your cards and you have a decent credit score and you're showing that you are uh, responsible in paying your, your bill every month, so you have a positive payment history, you and I know that the credit card companies love to flood your mailbox with credit card offers and junk mail. So I put this here. If you're receiving a lot of unsolicited credit card offers and junk mail, you can go to optoutprescreen.com and ask them to remove you from their marketing list and you will not receive those offers. So I put that here as your protection. 
And now look at this. Congratulations. And I say that for a reason, because I share with you that every week I do this, I want to give you strategies. So this week here, the strategy was to show you how to take the money that's in your bank account and use that money to pay off your purchases using your credit card as opposed to your debit card. And what's going to happen for you? My wife and I, we're going to celebrate 28 years of marriage December 3rd. I just booked a resort or it's a hotel in San Francisco. I'm taking her to San Francisco and the Napa Wine Valley for five nights. We're not paying for any of those nights. We're staying at a four diamond luxury hotel. It's this hotel is more luxurious than the Ritz Carlton, different level. I'm not paying anything. Why? Because my American Express card, because I pay my bills with that card every month, I accumulated enough points where I was able to use my Amex card for four nights. And then the Bonvoy card, because we had enough points on there for a free night, we were able to take those points from the Bonvoy and get a fifth night. So we're staying five nights for our wedding anniversary in a four diamond hotel and we're not paying a dime. And I've only used my American Express card for purchases that I was going to pay for anyway. All of my fixed expenses that accept credit cards are tied to my American Express. Whenever I go to the uh, grocery store, the gas station, American Express. And Kim asked me when I'm in the car, I said, Tom, why are you still at the pump? I said, because I'm transferring the money from the bank account to pay this American Express charge off right now before we leave. I pay it off immediately and just accumulate points. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. I want you to receive all the benefits, the rewards, the perks for you and your family based off things that you do anyway. So you're not taking on any additional debt but you're bringing on additional value for you and your children or for you and your family. That's the goal. Learn the game, play it well, reap the benefits. So again, I say here, congratulations. Why? Now that you have created a home-based business, that was last week, you should have created a home-based business or looked into peak into pink. Now I have people that say to me, you know, I'll see and I had a gentleman say this to me. <clears throat> he said, um, the peak into pink, that's for women. And I'm not really a salesperson. I said to him, you're missing the picture. I'm simply wanting you to look into this opportunity. Why? Because this opportunity is going to allow you to avoid the IRS exclusivity test. You're going to have product in your home and wherever room that's stored in, that's automatically going to be space you're going to write off every month. You're going to have products. So wherever you go, wherever you travel, you're going to share a product or do a demonstration or your wife can do it. And you're going to write that whole vacation. There are so many benefits. And so I said to him, I said, if you don't see that, then I want you to see this. Change your store. Right now, you buy health and beauty. Everybody has skin. You buy health and beauty products from Walmart, Sally Beauty, wherever you buy it from. Now you have a home-based business. Just change your store. That home-based business now becomes the store where you purchase all your products for your beauty and skincare needs every day anyway. But now it's going to give you write off every month for 12 months and the startup costs you can write off for up to five thousand mm. dollars. So now that you have a home based business, you are now writing off a portion of your home, a portion of your water, your electricity, your cell phone bill. You're writing all of that off. Homeowners Association dues, lawn service. You're writing all of that off mileage for 12 months months and you're getting those deductions you're hiring your children and you're writing that off tax deductible for up to twelve thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars based on things that you as a parent would pay for them anyway now it becomes a deduction when you look at all those deductions why wouldn't you have at least twenty five thousand dollars in deductions that was last week's this week's you will use your credit card opposed to your debit card to earn free miles for travel and or hotel stays and luxury hotels at luxury hotels and resorts. This will improve the station of living for you and your family without any extra expense. I would like to see, and again, I can't cast a vision for your family, but wouldn't it be beautiful if you use your credit card and you receive the points? And your gift to you and your family was every year we would spend Christmas now at a luxurious resort somewhere in the country without having to pay for it. 
simply because mom and dad chose to use their rewards card as opposed to their debit card to pay for expenses that we would have paid for every day anyway. Merry Christmas to us in San Francisco. Merry Christmas to us in Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard. Merry Christmas to us in Las Vegas. I want you to think about that. Okay, so homework. Homework is to select a credit card based on your credit score. Select a credit card, card excuse me. Take a look at the list of credit cards and see what card you qualify for based on your credit score. The link is below. So I gave you bankrate.com and nerdwallet.com. This link here is going to take you to a site where they're going to list all the credit cards I went over and they're going to have the credit cards and the credit score needed for those cards next to them. And they're going to give you a breakdown on all the rewards and benefits of each card. So just click on this link and everything is right there. Do your homework. That's your homework. Also, make sure your credit card utilization rate is no more than 20% across all credit cards for the ones you currently have. So the credit cards you currently have, please make sure you're not spending any more than 20% of the credit card limit on that card. Why? Because that makes up 30% of your credit score, and I want you to maintain a good credit score. Any questions, please? Next week, I'm going to talk about investments. So I'm going to show you where to place it. Well, we're going to have conversations around what the experts say, because I'm not going to give you financial advice. I'm going to share with you what the experts say. And then you can make an informed decision as to where you want to put your money so that it grows over time and accumulates so that you can leave wealth to your offspring. So that's next week. We're going to have a conversation around investment strategies. All right, family. God bless you. Have a good night. I will have this PowerPoint in your email inbox no later than Tuesday close of business. Good night.